Hello everyone, my name is Jessie and I work for Action on Postpartum Psychosis. I'm the social media coordinator. I'm also a mother and I have lived experience of postpartum psychosis. So I'm here today to talk to Catherine Cho, who has recently written her memoir called Inferno. So welcome Catherine. Thanks Jessie. And um, thanks for joining me. So I just wanted to start by telling um, you all a little more about the charity Action on Postpartum Psychosis. So APP supports women and families affected by postpartum psychosis, um, which is a serious yet treatable illness. And we help to raise awareness and offer peer support. We facilitate research, um, for example, into the causes and the recovery outcomes of postpartum psychosis. And we train health professionals as well. I'm going to start um, by asking you, um, Catherine, to... Um, so postpartum psychosis has been a silent mental illness for so many generations. It's been shrouded in shame and kept as family secrets. So thank you from all of the women and families that we support at APP for coming out and talking so eloquently and beautifully about your experience of postpartum psychosis in your book. How comfortable were you with telling such a personal story? I, it was interesting because I hadn't shared it uh, with my colleagues or um, with many of my relatives, um, but somehow I found the process of writing the book and sharing it actually with strangers or the wider uh, world a much less daunting thing. Um, it's something I just felt really strongly about. And for me, before I'd had postpartum psychosis, I'd never heard of it before. So it came as a complete shock. And I just felt very, I felt very strongly that it was important for women, especially new mothers to know that, you know, this is just something that can happen. Yeah. And um, what do you think are the barriers for women and families to talk openly and honestly about postpartum psychosis? I think it's a very frightening thing. I think the idea that one, you can lose your sense of reality is frightening for anyone, but particularly for a new mother. And the idea, I think, especially in the media that's presented about postpartum psychosis is that you hear these stories of women who've, you know, very sadly either harm themselves or harm the baby. And there's something that's just so shocking. And, you know, it just, it's terrifying because you don't think that that's what a mother should be. And I think because of that, there's such a strong stigma around it, this idea that, as a mother, you might not be trusted to take care of your own child. Um, and I think because of that, that creates this atmosphere or this feeling that if you do experience it, it's something that you need to keep secret. Yeah. And for you, what were the symptoms that, um, where you noticed that things weren't quite right? So my psychosis was very sudden and I guess very obvious. Um, it, almost happened almost instantaneously for me. Um, and the first sign for me was that um, I looked at my son's face and his face didn't look like his own face. Uh, his eyes had changed. Um, I thought his face was that of a devil's. Um, and from then it just went very steeply, uh, even more into this idea that until ultimately within a couple of hours, almost um, I lost all sense of time and place. So. For me, it, it started in the moment where my son didn't look like my son anymore. And how did your family react? My family, so my background is Korean. My parents are Korean. Um, actually, my in-laws are Korean as well. So mental health, um, especially anything postpartum, isn't discussed at all. And I think it was the first time they'd seen it or really encountered it. So they were incredibly shocked. Um, I was really lucky that my parents weren't scared about what, I mean, they were scared and, and they had to come eventually to help my husband take care of me, but they, and I think for them still, it's something that they don't really understand how it could have happened or why it happened. And for a really long time, they actually never talked about it. They just said that, you know, I had exhaustion 
Um, and that's how they explained it to relatives. Um, and so they were really surprised when I said that I was going to write a book or that I had written a book about it and that I was going to share the story just because for them, it's, it's a chapter that's just so dark and frightening that they really would much rather have left it behind. And do you have any advice for partners and families about how to support someone who's frightened and experiencing psychosis and in need of help? Yeah, so, you know, I was really lucky that my partner was incredibly supportive. Um, for He knew something was wrong. Um, and it, you know, when I was trying to communicate with him, I was so panicked and he stayed very calm throughout. And he didn't try to convince me that what I was experiencing wasn't real. He didn't try to dismiss what I was feeling. And I feel like if he had done those things, it would have really broken me and made me feel really isolated. But instead, he really made me feel supported and he listened. Um, and I think that's a difficult thing for you know anyone who's trying to support someone going through psychosis is just to listen. Um, because you know as much as you want to help somebody understand that what they're experiencing isn't real there's really nothing you can say to someone in that state to convince them otherwise and i think the best thing to do is to establish a sense of trust and just know that you know you are there for them that you're going to help them through it your background as an American Korean causes many internalized clashes in attitudes to pregnancy, to birth, to relationships. Do you think that this is also the case when it comes to beliefs about mental illness and attitudes to getting help? I do think so. Um, you know, I, I was born and raised in the US, so I never considered myself um, being very Korean, I think, until this experience when I realized kind of how much I'd internalized um, a lot of the Korean beliefs. Um, and one of the main things um, around birth, um, Koreans are very kind of superstitious about birth and the idea that after you give birth, you should stay home for the first 21 days and be very cautious and careful. And we, did, we didn't do any of those things. Um, you know, we were traveling and they just, and all of our family thought that we were being incredibly reckless. Um, and I think the same thing goes for mental illness is that in, at least in Korean culture, anything that has to do with a mental illness is viewed with suspicion. It's not viewed in the same way as a physical ailment. And I think for a really long time, you know, my family are not, you know, they did, it's not that they dismissed it, but they just didn't understand. And I remember even afterwards when I was talking to my mother-in-law about my experience, um, she was incredibly sympathetic. But when I asked her, you know, had she ever experienced anything like postpartum depression after she had given birth? And she just said, I didn't have time for that, which, you know, it kind of is implying that there's something very Western in this idea of giving in to your emotions, that maybe you have some control over it. And I think that's just a really deep, deeply rooted thing in Korean culture um, and belief. And I think it's slowly changing where people are understanding that a mental illness, you know, is really beyond your control. So APP campaigns for mother and baby units and we'd like to see these being available for women who experience postpartum psychosis globally. The general psychiatric ward um, rewarded you with a rich theme for your writing, but how do you feel about not having had this option of a mother and baby unit? Yes, it's something, you know, um, I feel really strongly about and I completely understand why APP campaigns for that. I think it would have made a such a huge difference. I'm, as a mother, as a new mother, you are in a completely different state from anyone else who is in a, a general facility. And I, even just being separated physically from your son or from your child at that moment, it makes such a difference. And I think for me, at least, even though I was only separated from my son for two weeks, it completely severed any sort of bond that we had. Um, and it, yeah, I, I cannot, I almost can't imagine what it would have been like being in a mother baby unit just because that experience seems completely foreign to what, you know, I went through. But I, I definitely think um, it would have been much, it would have been much better for the relationship that I had with my son. Many 
many of the women at APP talk about a sense of loss or grief for a period that cannot be recaptured. And there is much to, um, to come to terms with as you recover. But many also say that they feel enriched in some way and that it's made them a better, stronger person. Do you take any positives from your experience? Definitely. I mean, you know, of course, there's a sense of grief and loss um, and guilt that you have to um, accept um, that you weren't there as a mother that you broke when you, you know, mothers aren't meant to break. Um, and that relationship with my son is something that, you know, I feel like has been forever kind of changed. But at the same time, um, I think it's given me a, a much deeper sense of empathy. Um, I had never really understood mental illness until I experienced it myself. And, you know, I think it also taught me a lot just about how the kindness of others, there are so many people along the journey who are so kind to me in terms of, you know, the mental health professionals, um, the pe other people in the ward, my partner, my family, uh, my in-laws, it really just showed and opened this whole other dimension of experience that I'd never experienced before. That's the end of my questions and I'd like to round up by just thanking you Catherine for joining me for your honesty with the book um, and then also for to say for anyone that is watching um, that if you need any help or information about postpartum psychosis then do visit the Action on Postpartum Psychosis website and um, get in contact with us and reach out. So thank you again Catherine. Thank you Jesse. Thanks. Take care. Goodbye. Bye.